Hello, welcome to part two of our Claudio Basics Guide. Reminder that this is game version 4.2. In this part, we're going to talk more about strategy and go over some basic game plan elements, which will build on the essential tools we already went over. We'll also suggest some players to check out and cap it off with a brief character summary. Don't forget about all the resource links I mentioned in part one. Those may be very useful to you, especially if you are brand new to the game. I've included those once again in the video description below. But enough of that, let's get going. To begin, Claudio Starburst is more like a power-up than a traditional stance. For one, you don't enter the stance like you might with other stances. Instead, you gain a charge of Starburst, which you can then use to buff certain moves. It doesn't affect your neutral in any other way. Your movement, hurtbox, and all of that remains the same. The only indicator that you're charged up is the blue glow around his fist. Until you see an STB move, the charge stays, but once you burn it, you have to charge it again. And unlike traditional stances, there is no manual command to charge Starburst. Instead, there are only a handful of moves that will do so, and they have to actually hit, the one exception being his Rage Drive, which will charge STB on Block and Whiff as well. If you have Rage, his Rage Drive will certainly be the easiest to use to charge STB since it doesn't need to hit, so you'll get your charge no matter what. We should also note quickly that getting hit doesn't remove your charge, you keep it until you use it. Without Rage, Back 2 and Running 2 are the most common. They're both highs, but they're also both safe and fast. Back 2 is always fast faster, but running 2 has more utility, so depending on how good your instant running 2 is will dictate which one you lean on the most. Forward forward 1 plus 2 is a strong option since it's also safe, a mid, and you'll be using it for approach and as a mix to running 2, so plenty of opportunities to hit it. Your remaining charge moves you'll usually reserve for certain situations. For back forward 2 and forward forward 2 2 are both part of strings, so you'll have to incorporate those as part of your string mind games, otherwise you're opening yourself up to punishes. Forward 2 2 and while standing two are typically reserved only for punishing, although it's useful to test your opponent's response to forward two two. It's negative 26, but he jumps back pretty far, so if your opponent doesn't know how to properly punish that, it actually becomes a really strong neutral tool since it's a powerful high mid natural combo. But that's the end of the list. You have no other way to charge STB. The good news is that most of these are important aspects of your game anyway, regardless of the charge, so you shouldn't have any issues landing them. Now let's talk about your Starburst moves. Again, these aren't completely new moves, just better versions of your neutral moves. Starburst down back one plus two is definitely the most underwhelming since the only difference is that the second hit becomes unblockable, but they can still sidestep it on reaction, just like the normal version. Down two two is a little underwhelming as well, since the only thing that changes there is the second hit becomes a launcher. However, just like its normal counterpart, Starburst down 2-2 is only a natural combo on counter hit, so good defensive players will still block it. Upside is that it's at least a high crushing low counter hit launcher. Starburst back 4-3-2 is similar. The only change there is that the last hit becomes incredibly safe on block and turns into a launcher on hit. However, a jab actually trades with it, which greatly limits the reward, and the second hit of the string is still a high. Unless your opponent is simply unfamiliar with Claudio, you won't get much done with it. Conversely, down 1, 2, and forward 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2 represent your most common options. Starburst down 1, 2 is your instant offense option. It's a powerful mid-mid natural combo that gives a massive plus 8 on block and a knockdown splat on hit. While standing 1, 2 is nearly identical, the only difference being you're starting with your I-12 while standing 1 instead of the 17 frame down 1. Forward 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2 is your big defensive threat, safe, long range, I-16 mid-mid launching natural combo, although it of course represents a safe mid-launcher for mix-ups as well. So although not large in number, these three moves boost either your offense or defense depending on what you need in the moment. As one final note on Starburst, although you will find very basic combos in this guide, make note that using Starburst variants can greatly increase Claudio's combo versatility and overall damage. Example, hop kick, back two, jab, forward forward four, back three, starburst down one two into a running two for an ender. You'll notice the overall damage boost on the juggle. If you have to cut it short or modify it, like for wall carry, you still walk away with starburst, which can also potentially increase your damage at the wall. And that's it. Much like the character overall, there's not much to the stance and you're typically going to limit yourself even further to just a couple of options. But those options are thankfully very strong, fairly easy to use, and will absolutely boost your game.
Like several other characters in the game, the only thing to really point out with Claudio is that he's a very simple character. So how much you can get done is going to largely boil down to how good your fundamentals are. Spacing is a big one because Claudio has some of the best whiff punishers with his hop kick, back four two, and one plus two string, among others. If you have Starburst, throw in forward one plus two, one plus two, and with Rage, back four two forward becomes super powerful. These synergize well with his kit because he's really good in the mid rage, again, just emphasizing the spacing ass. The hop kick in particular has some nasty setup traps. For instance, hop kick after a down three hits will beat jabs. Anything that gives him that kind of space, think forward forward one plus two or back one, is perfect for a hop kick setup or any of his other whiff punishers. Otherwise, you're just going to use a simple style. Sidestep four will be your major low threat. Mix in some back one, like we mentioned in essential moves, or go for something like forward four, which will still allow you to keep up pressure on block thanks to the plus four. And beyond that, his move list is filled with really strong mids so you should have no problem finding a mid to mix your lows with. Claudio's homing tools are strong and his tracking overall is fine so you shouldn't have any problems there. Range in general is also not an issue for him. All of this gets amplified at the wall where it's even harder to get away from him and his strong array of splatters come into play. If they're pressuring you and not giving you the breathing room for a lot of sidestep games and such, remember that you have a 12 frame counter hit launcher with 4-3. Note that 4-3 is delayable too. Confirming counter hit 4-3 is very borderline I wouldn't recommend doing that unless your reactions are superb, but keep in mind that the second hit is a counter hit launcher, so even if you don't nab the counter hit 4, you can still potentially launch from it if they swing after. Down 4 2 is another quick counter hit launcher at I 14. You have both your hop kick and orbital for anti lows. Your down 2 2 and down back 3 are high rewarding, high crushing counter hit options. If you want something a bit safer, you have down 3 and down 4, but keep in mind that aside from his standing 10 frame jabs and perhaps while standing 4, Claudio's block punishing is really solid. So although Claudio is missing that really scary hell sweep type move and no grab game to speak of, he has a move for nearly every situation, which is in contrast to his really small move list. The counter hit tools and lows definitely come with some risk, but otherwise you have everything you need to get things going. As we've mentioned in other guides, there's no easy way to teach you fundamentals. These are just things you pick up the more you play. So keep grinding out those matches and you'll be fine. As always, we'll start by recommending App Play. It's the best quick info resource out there. Once you start to get comfortable with Tekken and you want to pick up a character on the fly, there's nothing better than this. First, probably the most well-known Claudio player, Chicago's 20Z is a great resource to learn Claudio and really get a look at what the standard condensed Claudio style looks like. He's very light on content creation, meaning he has no stream or YouTube, but he's played in so many events, both online and offline, that there is a ton to watch. If you are looking for some stream content and such, two Korean players that you can check out, also well known and plenty of high level matches to see for both given how the Korean scene is. Mulgold, you'll have the most luck just searching through YouTube since he doesn't have his Twitter anymore, but Breadman still streams and puts out some videos. Either way, their old matches are still more than applicable today. Lastly, some Euro love. Tetsu is a sponsored German player. His streams and video are a little infrequent, but still plenty of tourney vids to check out. Lastly, as always, don't take this list as final. Because of his simplicity, Claudio is a strong tournament character, so search around and you'll certainly find more. This brings us to the end of our guide. As we've said a bunch already, Claudio is a very basic character, so if you're looking to get into Tekken by simply wading into the water rather than jumping into the deep end, then Claudio is going to be perfect for that. You also have something unique to play around with since no other character has a charge stance like Starburst, but overall Claudio is just a very well-rounded character. He has great highs and mids, his tracking is strong, his punishing is good, especially with punishing, his range is good, and his damage is good. His poking can be a little suspect at times and his lows aren't super scary which isn't helped by the fact that his grabs are weak but you still have a lot to work with without the stress of a huge or complicated move list so keep at it and i wish you the best of luck in your training and with that thanks for checking out this video don't forget to like subscribe and turn on notifications here on youtube so that you get alerted when a new video drops twitch and twitter links are also down below lastly huge thank you to our patrons the more support we have the more resources we can devote to channel content so again i can't thank everyone enough for considering supporting the Patreon. Stay safe everyone and we'll catch you next time.